Archbishop Chukuma celebrates 30 years of his consecration, appreciates God. Chairman, Gafcon Primate Council sends new letter to the church amid COVID-19 outbreak. And meanwhile, some African countries began relaxation of lockdown in their country. Hello and welcome to the news on the hours brought to you from the Advent Cable Network Nigeria Television, ACN and TV. I am Rachel Ibun. The Archbishop of the Ecclesiastical Province of Inugu and Bishop of the Diocese of Inugu Anglican Communion, the Most Reverend Emmanuel Chukuma, has appreciated God for his faithfulness and mercy in ministry as he marks his 30th year of consecration. Archbishop Chikuma appreciated all those who has contributed in one way or the other for the success in his ministry. He also admonished every member of Enugu province and diocese for support for more progress. We thank God for these 30 years of our anniversary and we give glory to God. Uh, the celebration has been postponed so far because of this COVID uh, shutdown. And we want to express our greetings to all our bishops or at the subject of Nigeria, and also to thank all our members who have been so supportive. And all we have to say is to encourage all of us to come to be strong in our faith and trusting God for tomorrow. And we should also, as well as possible, not be weary and fearful in proclaiming the gospel of Christ until Christ comes. What we need now is to encourage one another and to persevere in this time of uh, shutdown and economic uh, problems. The Lord has been so faithful to us and we are going to continue to do our best to make the Church of Nigeria move from strength to strength. All we need to do is to encourage one another and love one another and avoid any division or segregation or any sort of hatred that may make us not to be very much uh, together when Christ comes. So I want to say we are thankful to God. My wife and I and my family are grateful to God for His mercies and for His protection. I want to particularly thank the Archbishop and Prime that consecrated us 30 years ago, the Suez and Buffet Peace, the Most Reverend Abiodu Adetiloye, and all those who have brought us and have mentored us. And we also thank all the Archbishops and Prime Minister who have also worked, that we have worked with. We have done our best and we pray that the, our best will not be better than what we are going to do more. So we pray that our people in Enugu Diocese and Enugu Province are going to work together with us in peace and harmony to make sure that we develop the Church of God and make it an enviable area to the glory of God. My important, my important thing to be working in evangelism and winning of souls and become more prayerful and more dedicated to the work of God. So I wish all of you good luck and thank God for these 30 years. It will not be easy, but by the grace of God, we are what we are today. The Anglican Bishop of the Diocese of Ibadan, His Grace the Most Reverend Joseph Akifenwa, has reached out through words of encouragement to those who lost their loved ones to the coronavirus a pandemic that has put the entire world in jeopardy. In a video message, the former Archbishop of Ibadan Ecclesiastical Province encouraged them to be strong in the Lord Jesus. He also called on those around them to comfort them. Beloved, our hearts go out to families who have lost loved ones in the wake of this pandemic. May the Lord comfort all of them and if any of us have such families near us, please let us reach out to them with the love of Christ. Please avoid any form of stigmatization. Rather, mobilize Christians' charity for the bereaved and especially the hurting. That is our gospel mandate. So declares in James chapter 1 verse 27, and the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 31 to 46. He used same medium to urge the populace to avail themselves with credible information that will help curb the spread of the deadly disease and avoid the spread of panic and fake news. He also called on all believers not to waver in faith. As individuals and responsible citizens, the steps we need to take to avoid COVID-19 infection and to contribute to the containment of the disease are already in public domain. We encourage you all to avail yourselves of 
credible information and to comply dutifully. Please avoid unfounded, unsubstantiated, or unvalidated solutions. And beware of scary mongers whose talk in trade is to spread fear in the populace. People of God, notwithstanding what we see or hear, let us remain strong in our faith. Let us seize the opportunity of this adversity to witness to the power of the saving Jesus Christ. Let us at the same time demonstrate the historic faith of the apostles who did not waver in faith during their own travails. They stood for Christ in the face of all forms of adversity. The Diocesan Bishop of Okrika Diocese, Right Reverend Tuboko Simi Aberi, has dedicated a mini estate building erected by the Diocesan Cathedral Mothers Union and Women's Guild. The impregnable edifice is located at Water Pit Estate, Osogu Abuluama, Horakot, in River State. While dedicating the new story building, Bishop Aberi remarked that it is a giant stride by the Cathedral women. He also urged them to maintain every law of the land guiding possession of such property since it is for investment purposes. The Anglican Diocese of Jurors has said that the Christian life is one that is laced with suffering, bringing from Jesus Christ himself down to the apostles and the early church. This was made in their daily devotion to the Reverend Canon Hassan John said that the rich should use the opportunity to visit and look after the poor and the vulnerable as it is also part of christianity to show compassion actually the plan from the garden of eden when man fell till today has been that god has come into our suffering and jesus demonstrated that suffering by dying on the cross this suffering that we're talking about is that which builds the platform in which christianity has been has has grown over the years we need to be christians at a moment like this yes it comes with taking a lot of risks i'm not saying you must go out i'm not saying you should not social distance no what i'm saying is you need to be on your knees praying for somebody out there perhaps a call to somebody who hasn't had anything to eat maybe somebody again who needs somebody to talk to yes you can spend that moment on phone and talk to somebody indeed there are those who need to hear that Jesus indeed is alive. And this is the moment to reach out with that okay. arm of fellowship. And also that this is the time to prove and show that indeed we are one united family under Christ. And away from church news, the president's special aide, Femi Adishino, in a communique has revealed that President Muhammadu Buhari has extended the tenure of the professor Keme Pondered led interim management committee of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, from May 1st to December 31st, 2020. In his statement, the special advisor noted that the extension is to cover the period of the forensic audit of the NDDC, earlier approved by the Federal Executive Council under the chairmanship of the president. In the same vein, President Buhari equally approved that the NDDC provides intervention support to complement efforts of the federal and state governments against further spread of COVID-19 in the nine states of the Niger Delta region. The materials and supplies are to be done through emergency procurement method as provided in sections 42B, subsection C and 43 of the Public Procurement Act of 27. Meanwhile, the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, has said that several plots meant to derail the forensic audit ordered by President Muhammadu Buhari will fail. Speaking in an interview at the NDDC headquarters in Purakot, its Director of Corporate Affairs, Mr. Charles Alderley, said that the allegations against the Interim Management Committee were deliberate falsehood orchestrated to undermine the ongoing forensic audit exercise while describing as completely untrue the several allegations against the commission. Adeli noted that IMC did not spend 200 billion naira in two months, contrary to claims in some quarters, stating that the IMC received 33 billion naira in three months 
out of which 22 billion naira has been spent. NDDC spokesman explained that the expenses covered payments to vendors and suppliers like hotels and contractors, especially those on 50 million naira and below. Also reacting to issues of scammers duping members of the public in the guise of assisting them with agricultural loans, Odili advised those who have genuine business with the NDCC to always visit the Commission's office website and also social media handles. Italy to open to efforts next week. These and many more shortly. Please stay tuned. How do I get tested? If you fall into any of these previously mentioned categories, remain in self-isolation and immediately call your state hotline or the NCDC toll-free line on the screen. The State Ministry of Health, supported by NCDC, will arrange for sample collection and transportation to the lab. Where can I get tested? There are several labs across Nigeria for the testing of COVID-19, and these labs are currently rapidly being expanded across the country to reduce turnaround time from when the samples are taken to when they are tested for the disease. And you can only get tested if you fit the criteria as previously mentioned and a sample has been collected for testing by the state team. What do I do if my COVID-19 test is positive? If your result is positive, please do not panic. Many people who have the infection will show mild symptoms and they can recover quickly with just supportive care. And most of the cases recorded till date in Nigeria are mild to moderate and are clinically stable. What do I do if my COVID-19 test is negative? If your result is negative, it means that you are not infected at the time your sample was taken. However, it is still possible to get infected. Therefore, you should continue to practice social distancing. Wash your hands with soap and running water all the time. Use alcohol-based hand drop frequently and clean your environment all the time. Should I come to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control to get tested? No. If you fall into any of these previously mentioned categories, please remain in self-isolation and immediately call your state hotline or the NCDC toll-free line on the screen. Welcome back. Thanks for staying tuned. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or our social media platforms on facebook.com or youtube.com forward slash acnntv. And to be up to date with our news and other programs, download the VM Africa app from Android and iOS stores. And now to the international scene. The chairman Gafcon Primate Council, the most reverend Dr. Foley Beach, has encouraged Christians to, as a matter of seriousness, pay more attention to praying fervently, especially in this time of crisis, where the coronavirus outbreak has forced everyone to focus on what is really important. And according to him, has been so encouraging to see Gafcon churches around the world quickly adapting to new ways of being church and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ using the tools the internet gives. Archbishop Foley Beach expressed worry that in addition to the pandemic, Christians in northern Nigeria are suffering intensified and barbaric attacks from Fulani jihadist tribesmen who are deliberately targeting women and children. And all of this, according to him, is a matter of much prayer. And he therefore called on all intercessors to join in beseeching the Lord to provide for his people in the midst of their needs. The chairman, Gafcon Primate Council, the most reverend Dr. Foley Beach, also made reference to Archbishop Henry Ndokuba's encouragement to Nigerians to turn wholeheartedly to Christ while offering counsel on dealing with COVID-19 and that of Archbishop Jackson Ole Sapit's encouragement to Kenyans to remember their faith at this time of crisis. Meanwhile, South Africa has also begun to loosen its three coronavirus lockdown 
allowing some industries to reopen after five weeks of restrictions that plunged its struggling economy deeper into turmoil. The economy of Africa's most industrial nation was already tethering when the lockdown kicked into gear on March 27 to contain the spread of infection. To combat the economic destruction, the government has adopted a gradual and phased approach to reopening the country from Friday, May 1st. Around 1.5 million workers in selected industries return to work in the next phase under strict health conditions. According to Trade and Industry Minister Ibrahim Petel, the minister also said that winter clothing, textile and packaging manufacturing are among the industries permitted to reopen factories, while restaurants will be open only for takeaway deliveries, adding that some outside activities such as cycling, walking and running will be allowed, but for just three hours in the morning while social distancing and wearing masks in public and at workplaces will be mandatory. Rwanda's Prime Minister has said the country will partially lift its virus lockdown from next week and allow people to move freely during the day, more than six weeks after being confirmed. Rwanda was one of the first to impose strict lockdown measures in Africa on March 22nd, when it had only 19 cases and to date has officially recorded 225 cases and zero deaths. According to the Prime Minister, from May 4th, citizens will be allowed to move freely from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. and will need permission to do so later in the evening. According to the statement, hotels and restaurants will be allowed to operate but must close by 7 p.m. People will be allowed to exercise in open spaces but sports facilities will remain closed. No more than 30 people will be allowed to attend funerals and schools. Churches, gyms and bars will remain closed and also transport between different provinces is still banned. Borders remain closed and mass gathering prohibited. Italy's transport minister has said that it would reopen two of its shuttered airports next week. Chiapiono in Rome and Perotola in Florence. The two airports will reopen on May 4th for passengers' flights, the minister said in a statement. Chapino is Rome's secondary airport and is mostly used by low-cost carriers, while Peretola is Tuscany's second largest airport after Pisa. The two airports have been shut to passengers' flights since March 13th. Italy's current coronavirus lockdown expires on May 4th, while many restrictions remain but more people are expected to head back to work and travel within regions will be allowed under some circumstances. The nationwide quarantine began on March 9th. The opening of the airports next week will allow for testing of a screening system for coronavirus, the minister said, without elaborating. Italy's trains will also add new long-distance connections in order to ensure minimum essential services, it said. And now to sports story. France's Football League declared the season over with Paris Saint-Germain named as Ligue 1 champions. PSG led the table by 12 points from Marcellus when the season was suspended in mid-March because of the coronavirus outbreak, which has gone on to kill more than 24,000 people in France. The announcement by the LFP comes after Prime Minister Edouard Philippe said that professional sports leagues Notably, football cannot restart because of the risks linked to the pandemic, ruling out any possibility of following the lead of the Netherlands, who decided to void their seasons without a champion, relegation or promotion. The LFP said a final table was arranged on the basis of average points per game. Ten rounds of matches remained when the campaign was halted, although PSG and Stadtball both has a game in hand. And that's it on the news on the hour. Thanks for watching. Please stay safe. I am Rachel Igunu.